Hey guys, Shane here from 3D Printing. Today I'm going to show you how to do a filament mod for the Cube 3 filament cartridges. Welcome back guys. So like I said, we're going to do some modifications. So here I have one almost finished and this is using regular old standard 1.75 by 4 millimeter PTFE tubing. So this is much more rigid, provide more protection for your filament versus what standard comes with it, which is this type of setup. Now inside of here is 1.75 millimeters by 3 millimeter filament tubing, the PTFE tubing. Super duper thin, it uh, doesn't really protect the filament all that much in my opinion. And they put this type of like spine reinforcement around it, which again, I really don't like. I don't like the way that it bends. So once it's, so this is, it's in the hot end and you turn it and it goes like this as it prints and it does all this flexing. I personally don't like that. I've had too many failures with this setup and I think it's really bad. So we're gonna go ahead and do a modification so that you can use regular PTFE tubing with your printer. Now the first step is to pull the filament off of your printer. So if you have it, just go ahead and do the menu, go settings, change filament, and then walk through the steps. It heats up the nozzle and pull that out. Once you have that off, the hardest part to do is to get this covering off of the base of the cartridge. I didn't do a video on it. It takes me a good five minutes sometimes to pull this off. And once it's off, I don't want to put it back on just to refilm it, I'm sorry. Once you get this off, life is doing so much more better for you, but you just have to get this pulled off. Now there's little tabs in here that are keyed. So just get a screwdriver and once you get in there, just work your way around, work your way around, and this will pop off. So once that's off, you're gonna have your nozzle and filament tube coming off and coming out of this aluminum bracket. I've already taken this out. But to get off this aluminum bracket, just right in here, there is four screws. There are two pan head screws that come out quite easily. And once those are out, you're gonna have two left that are slightly larger, and you're gonna go ahead and pull those out now. And once you get those out, you're gonna be stuck with this little gear in here, and your filament tube is still gonna be stuck in there, like so. So this filament tube will just pop right off. If you have filament in there, it's okay. You might need to pull this gear out in order to get the filament out. Now that's all disassembled. Once you have this separated and your filament's coming out of it, best thing to do, get a lighter, heat up the tip, just the very tip. Don't go too, too deep into it, just the very tip. Heat that about 10, maybe 15 seconds max. Don't put the, the flame on it, put the flame below it. And then grab your filament here at the bottom and just yank real quick. If you don't pull it out quickly, it's going to expand as it cools down and it's gonna get stuck at this little threaded thing that's on the bottom of this, this threaded barrel that's on the bottom of this because it constricts the tubing too much. So you really just yank it straight out, you'll be good to go. All right, so everything's apart. So now we kind of have to think. There are several different ways we can go about doing this and there are several different methods to do it that are on the web. All right, so before we do anything, you're gonna need some parts. So you're gonna need some PTFE tubing push fittings. So I have two different styles here. One, the inner diameter of the out of this one is too small so that you would only put in the four millimeter tubing to the top and then call it a day. This one, the, the, the tubing fits all the way through. So there's two different methods you can go by doing this. You can pick whichever way you wanna do it. I'll, I'll try and show both or how you could change them out. But again, it's totally up to you what you wanna do. And before you disassemble anything, you need to print something. So you're gonna need this. This is two parts and this is a jig. So inside of here, your actual nozzle fits right inside of this jig and it requires uh, four, I would say these are probably about 40 millimeter M4 bolts and some type of nut. I'm using T-nuts because I didn't have any bolts that actually would fit in there. I didn't want to use lock ones because I need to take this apart and whatnot. So then once you have this together, you put that in, you put your nozzle in here and use a regular drill or a drill press if you have one, anything. It gives you a nice straight line. You drill down in here and then pull it back out and that gives you your hole in the top for this. Now once you drill the hole, that's where a lot of things start to change out on what you could do. You could do what I have here, which is the PTFE tubing runs straight to the nozzle using a, a little method of splicing them together, which I'll show you. Or you can go ahead and put the push fitting right on top of here and do, you still have to do a bit of splicing to it, but run the push fitting right to the top of there, and then you could easily take this on and off if you wanted to. I preferred not to go that route because I thought that was one more part I didn't have to have there, and doing it this way worked just fine for me. So that's why I decided to go this route. But again, either way works just fine. Now again, I'm only gonna show you one method. There are several other methods. There's someone out there that had made this little contraption 
Uh, it's three printed pieces that come together. You take, two, you have to have two of these cartridges in order to make one of these work because it requires two of these threaded gears that are in there. But it also requires some crazy little uh, push fitting to push fitting adapter, which is $30, the cheapest I could find. Maybe, I mean, in America online, it's that expensive. Maybe you could find it in a store somewhere or maybe it's cheaper overseas, but for American retailers, and even looking on like AliExpress and things like that, I could not find it for cheap at all. So I decided not to go this route and I also didn't like the way this was because again, you have to sacrifice two of these cartridges in order to get one of these to work. Well, that, that means you need four cartridges. That's over a hundred, that's, that's, well, it's like $200 because these are almost 50 bucks a piece once you have them in order to get two of these working. Maybe this would be valid if you could just get some, somebody has old empty cartridges that you could take or they would just give you, I guess maybe, but if you're buying cartridges with filament in it, this is not the route to go. Okay, so you need the printed part, you need these, you need some PTFE tubing. So I had purchased some of the same 1.75 by three millimeter PTFE tubing for kind of like testing and whatnot. And it's a little bit uh, more, it's a little stronger. Uh, the material's a little bit better well made than what came with it. And I have it in white. I also have it in clear. The clear is definitely thinner. The white feels like it has a little bit more oomph to it, we'll call it. And then I picked up, which is already on here, some standard 1.7 by by four millimeter PTFE tubing. Again, much more rigid, but this is kind of what I was going for. Again, we're gonna make sure that our tubing stays nice and upright like this and doesn't do any of the weird bendingness that it currently does. Okay, now let's work on taking this apart and I'll show you what we need to do in order to make this work. Okay, so here we have the extruder here, or actually the, this like the nozzle that goes part of the extruder. It's not really the extruder. The nozzle, here we go. This is the nozzle. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna put your screwdriver right in the back of this and just kind of peel this up a little bit and go to the sides. Once you get it so far, it'll start to come up a little bit better. It's very easy just to pop this right off. Okay, so now when you get this off, just know that this here, there's a spring right here that keeps the pressure down. So if the nozzle bumps into something, it has some give that it can bounce up into. So we just need to take that off like so. And now the nozzle here, the metal part, should pull right off of the PTFE tubing. Maybe not so much. All right, so a little bit of uh, lighter helped that out. There's just some extra in there. Couldn't get it all quite out. So lighter and then just gently kind of pull this off. And as you can see, there it is all ready to go. Spring. Okay, so now we're stuck with this thing. This is a threaded barrel and it can easily just be twisted right off. Sometimes it takes a little bit extra, that's a little bit sticky. So I'm actually going to just cut this because I don't want to use any of this here anymore. I want to just keep the barrel. Now that twist right off like that and it's really hard but you can see the threading down in there. Okay, so now we just need to pull this off the back and it just has this little keyed tab there. It easily just pops right off. Okay, so. We've got that, we've got our nozzle, that's trash. And now we have the rest of this here. Okay, so here at the other end, there's another one of these threaded barrels. Go ahead and pull that off. And there's this larger piece of plastic tubing that's just kind of in order to reinforce this. Cause again, cause it's so doggone flimsy, they had to have this extra piece in there to make it a little bit stronger. Okay, so now there's nothing on either end. We just have this whole big jazz here in the middle. So we just need to pull out the PTFE tubing because we want this piece right here. That broke off, but that's okay, because I don't care about that. There we go, okay. So the old stuff is garbage. This is what we want right here. So as you can see here, it's like all that skeletonized spine deal. We just need this block right here. So I'm just going to cut this nice and close, and now we just are left with this. Now you don't have to use this. If you want, you can 3D print a replacement like this here. So there's the original and there's the replacement. Now this prison has to have a slightly larger hole, which is okay because what you can do with this one is you can either put the push fitting straight in here into the top, or you can use the larger OD PTFE tubing from the top and the smaller from the bottom. So it's your call. Okay, now I'm actually gonna use this as pass-through. So I'm gonna use these larger PTFE tube uh, push fittings and to get it into here. So the, what I need to do is, I'm gonna need to drill this out a little bit. I'll just figure out whichever size I need for this. Drill that out and put that into there. Now, alternatively, if you didn't wanna do a pass-through all the way through, you could use this one. 
and screw it here into the top and just bring the top in and then use the smaller OD from the bottom. Again, it's up to you, it's your call. Okay, so here it is with the push fitting all the way through. I'm gonna show you, this is the standard size here, it's just a little snippet. I can just push this down and it comes all the way through the bottom there to give you a nice solid connection. So this is, again, this is just one way to do it. It's the way I'm gonna do it for this. It's nice and solid, I won't go anywhere. Alternatively, if you didn't want to do it up this high, you could cut this flat and go down more deep into the actual block, but there's plenty of plastic to hold that in. Just so you can see, it goes right back up into the top where it was. There's plenty of clearance in there so that when you snap this back shut, it will lock that in place and you don't need to worry about it going anywhere. So, I'll just get my actual one here and just push that down through it. I need to just set it on this, like that, and pull it down. So it'll be right about to where it needs to be on the block, which is this. So I have to come right to there just to meet up with it. Now, there's a few things you can do. One, you can leave it like this, or two, you can put a small, if you drill out this with a small piece, with a small drill bit, you can put a piece of the smaller PTV tubing up in there, thread the um, little barrel connector on it, and then stack it in there, and that way it'll be nice and solid. Again, it's whatever you wanna do. So actually, let's give that a shot. So I have here the end of my tubing, and I have a, what size is this? Uh, 760 forts I think will work out well. So we just need to drill into this a bit. Okay. Get our smaller OD and spread it up into there. So I did notice before I do need to kind of cut it down a little bit and we need to shave it down a little bit as well. So give me like a starting point and then just shave it down a smidge. That way I can have a thicker wall on that and not have to worry about it. So that's in there. It's a little bit of resistance there, but right, yeah, right about there is where it meets the resistance where they come together. But other than that, it's pretty good. So we know that works now. Now we need to figure out how much we need on it. Okay, and then we come down into here. It needs to stop right around here before it goes in. So I'll give it a little bit of extra there. Okay, so that's how much we need. Now the fun part is to take one of the threaded barrels and thread it onto it. It's not terribly hard, but it does take a little bit of patience because it's a little tight. It's actually spinning <laughs> inside of there. All right. We're gonna have to just pinch it for now. Let's put a little bit of filament in there to kind of help it. That's what it looks like. And if this other bearing was in there. We can see now that I cut that a little bit too long because it would actually interfere with the the gripping of those teeth. So we'll just cut it back now. Gotta make sure that it's gonna grab and not, well actually it's gonna pass through easily. Okay, so there we have it. There is our new PTFE tubing goes all the way down into this little collar and is locked in, well, will be locked in there once you put like the top on and you can easily feed your filament right into it. Not too bad. All right, so let's go back to modding the carriage 
for the nozzle, the plastic parts. So again, you're gonna need your little contraption here, your little jig. Okay, and there we have the two parts. You can see I've already drilled through mine once because I did the one that is my example. So all we have to do is just put this thing back together like so. And it just sets right in there with one. There's the second one. You see it fits in there nice and tight. And put all your bolts back in. Again, I'm just using these T-nuts because it's what I had available. If you have M4s that would work in here, then by all means go ahead and use those. But it's just to hold this thing tight and in place. And props to whoever modeled this because making that fit is so perfectly, I believe is amazing in my opinion because I suck at modeling. So maybe I'm just easily impressed, but I think it's pretty amazing to make a jig for this. Now what this does is I believe this is a 15 degree angle up from the top of the nozzle or from there. It's some type of degree angle. I forget what they said though. Okay, so now that we have it, we just need to throw the drill through here. And again, it's a four millimeter PTFE tubing. So we go a little bit larger than that because it also gives you the option again, if you want to use a push fitting, you could just sub you know, uh, substitute that right in there. So I'm going to go drill this and I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, we've got it drilled now. Just need to go ahead and pull it apart. There's your screwdriver here. Just pop it open. Okay. So it might need to clean up a little bit in here if there's anything in there. This one came out actually pretty clean. So that was easy day. And you get yourself a big old piece of PTFE tubing. Don't skimp on it. There's no reason to. And we're going to need to figure out how we're going to get our nozzle reconnected. So our nozzle is right here. All right, so we're going to come in right about to there. And we're going to, because right in this opening, let me see if I can do this here. Okay, well, right in this opening right here is where the barrel goes. That little barrel that's so annoying. That's what helps lock all this in place. Just like that. So we'll probably bring our thing to like here. So we're gonna drill this out again, just like we did the other one. Uh, thread in this barrel connector and then leave enough on here so that we can have our nozzle fit in there nice and snug, which again, it almost touches it. All right, so now that I have it, if you pull this off, you can see it goes all the way down till it stops. And it stops right here at this hilt, which is good. And when you place it in, it actually fits into that slot just where it should. So now we just have to shave off a little bit of this top because this is now too long. I don't want it to go that far up into the tubing. I want the, uh, the thicker tubing down in here some more. Okay, and it ends up just like that. Perfect. So now we need the uh, take us off. Oh, where's our spring at? Oh, where'd that go? There it is. Spring gets compressed. It goes right behind there like that. That all locks in. This is in at a nice place. And then this one just slides on top. But when you put this on, you kind of have to play with the spring a little bit to get it out of the way. And then wham, bam, there it is. So all we'll do is I'm gonna cut it to be the exact same length as the other one so they both look even and we should be good to go. All right, so now that we've kind of figured out basically what we're gonna do with the nozzle, what are we gonna do with the carriage? A couple different options you can do. I personally do not want to use this, but I can see the validity in using it because you can be able to kind of anchor in that top piece here to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. I kind of keep it free flow right now. So what you would probably want to do is cut this one across and then kind of loop out the bottom here. So. I'm going to make a quick adjustment on here, take it over to my jigsaw, cut it out and see how it looks. All right, now that we have that cut out real nice in there. You know, it worked out easy enough. You could use a Dremel, you could use, I have a little hand coping saw up there. I have my little uh, jigsaw on my other workbench where I do all the messy work. Anything you want to do to cut this out, heck, you probably use an X-Acto knife after a while. It is pretty thick, uh, sturdy plastic, so, there is that. All right, so let's put together the one that I've done and see how it looks. All right, so there it is, completely reassembled. 
We've got our nice new PTFE tubing on the top. Again, that push fitting is just to give it that extra rigidity in there. Uh, it can easily be taken out later. Or if you don't want to use it at all, again, you don't have to. You can drill straight through just enough for the PTFE tubing. You could drill straight through just the plastic, the printed one, just for that as well. I personally like this a little bit better. And all you have to do is just line up your filament here from the bottom, tell it to extrude, and then it will just suck it right up in there. And it's nice and easy to watch it go all the way through and see it come out the bottom. And then you're set. All right, so again, guys, this is not the only way to do this. There are several methods out there in order to modify your cartridge for this. This is just the way that I recommend to do it. Uh, I've been doing a modified version of this until I actually created this video, but it's worked out very well for me so far, and I can't see doing anything different in the future. Now, alternatively, if you didn't want to modify anything, you could use your old spools and re-spool filament onto it if you really wanted to. I personally find that annoying, that's just me. It was much easier just to remove the side or just have the, the uh, have this hole in the side and then feed it through. It just worked out much easier for me. And on this printer, once I put two colors on there, I'm not constantly switching them all the time. So it makes life a little easier. I mean, switching filament is not the easiest thing. You should reassemble, disassemble this, take that out and then be able to pull it out. Uh, it was the easiest way because of backing out the filament really isn't a uh, an easy option with this printer. So it does have that kind of downfall for it. But once you put in two colors, if you just need to put them in there and you're gonna be replicating multiple parts all the time, let this thing run, it'll go like a champ. All right guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, please let me know and give it a thumbs up. If it didn't, hit the dislike button. Let me know down below, I'd love to hear from you. So if you wanna support me, help me make more of these kind of videos, down below there's a link for Patreon. Donate me a dollar more, I greatly appreciate it. My current Patreons, thank you for your support. If you want to help me out without spending some money, down below affiliate links. That's a great way to help me out. Update your bookmarks. Do your daily shopping, especially Amazon. That's the big one for me. Go ahead and use that. And a little slice of what you buy comes back to me and helps me purchase things for the channel. Over here on the side, you're going to see my original cube mod that I did in order to alter the firmware so that you can use any type of filament. So please go check that out. And maybe another random video down here for you guys to check out. I thank you guys for watching so much. And until next time, happy printing.